New day, new attempt to finally finishing up this server. Originally, this series was planned to have like six episodes. I, I had like a sheet of paper where I written down what I want to do each episode. And the original plan was six. I think we are now at number 10. So yeah, you, you can already see how building blindly or building for the first time a server like this takes significantly longer than you expected at first. But in between last episode and today, the only thing I have done is route this fiber cable here. And I'm sure it has a name 10 gigabyte SFP plus to SFP plus 30 meters. It's an SFP plus cable. Uh, the other end goes into the 10 gig switch that is in the other room where my main editing PC and all of the other uh, the, the server is connected to it. The other like editing workstations are all connected to that switch and it has a SFP plus port and this is the other end of the cable. And this will now finally go into uh, the network card of this server. Now, I did do a bit of research in between uh, because the card or, or TrueNAS recognized that there is a new connection that wasn't the issue, but it had all sorts of weird glitches and, and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, after which I found out that a simple reboot of the system solved all of my issues. So I did a reboot in between. Uh, another thing I found out is you don't want to have the same PC with two different NICs, so, so uh, two different network cards on the same network. Apparently that doesn't do particularly well. We still have two cables in the server. There is another RJ45 cable in there, but that one goes into the IPMI system of the motherboard. So that's a separate separate thing, let's say a separate PC, so that I can still access uh, the whole ASUS control panel thing on another desktop. And the main connection, the main network connection, now goes through this one here. And stuff that I learned, reboot freeness if you're switching your network card, and apparently don't use two different network cards on the same system, on the same network. Stuff we've learned. But I want to show you something. Do we have connection? Yes. We got here a TeamViewer session uh, of my main editing rig and the reason for that is that the mini PC here, no matter what I would do, I would never achieve like a 10 gig connection to it because it doesn't have a 10 gig cord. The only 10 gig cords available in the office are inside my PC and inside the old server. And this one here, of course. But that's the reason why I team viewed into the system, just so that I can show you. Let's take a file that isn't here. It was quicker before. We had like 700. Oh, this is outside buffering. So we are now copying down, so onto my PC at 230 megabytes per second, which is freaking quick. It's like two and a half times what I had before. But the joke is, and I do not truly understand it, somebody maybe explain to me why I am reading at half the speed that I am writing. Like, as for my understanding, I should be enhancing read speeds the more, like, ZFS magic I got going. But in this case, I got more than one disk, like, one hard drive would never achieve 250 MB per second, but, I, so I got more than that, but I, I, why am I writing at more than twice the speed. I do think that maybe the cache drive or the RAM has something to do with it. Like it is caching it somewhere and then slowly writing it on the disks. And the only way I can find out if that is the case is once I copy the whole old server onto here. Uh, because I would need to write one terabyte to fill up the SSD and half a terabyte to fill up the RAM. So to get to the point where we have no more cache, I would need to transfer one and a half terabytes. And I don't have one and a half terabytes lying around on my main PC to copy into every direction. And it takes, it would take an hour or two, multiple hours to do that. So I will uh, screen record the, the final copy of the whole server to see what happens. If at some point, once we reach that one and a half terabytes, or one for the SSD, or half, I, I don't know which cache it is, uh, but once we reach any point, if it's going to tank from that between 500 and 700 max per second down to the 250 or whatever the drives can pull. But we got amazing speed right now. I believe I can enhance it a bit. Like we have a 10 gig con connection. And if we take a look at here, and if we take a look here at the network area, we can see that it it's very close that, to that 10 gig, let's say, limit, but it's not quite there. I, I think we can do some more here. I'm pretty sure you can, you can customize some Samba settings. You have different settings that you can still play around. I guess a lot has to do with like, like SMB and what I can 
change. I don't want to say you have like block size, but you, you have different things that you can change and switch around and maybe we can squeeze out some more. But the 10 gig connection stands, we have full access to everything. The server is theoretically deployable. I can slam it into, into its final destination and start copying around. Now, one thing I will also do, but that's like off camera, um, right now, you can see it has this IP here ending with 1, 164, which is whatever the DHCP web server of my, my router gave it, and I will fix that. I could fix it on the server end, but then, then I would need to block the IP on the router, so what I'm usually doing is just telling the router to always give this network card this IP address and then leave the server at DHCP, so dynamically get your IP from the router. Uh, both methods would work, but I prefer to take the router uh, approach. And yeah, then not have like 164 at the end, but like two, <laughs> which usually, uh, yeah, one is uh, the, the router usually, and two usually in my office is the server. So I will take away two from the old server and give it to this one. But that's at a later step. Now for the rest of this episode, I have another little present for my server. It is a UPS. And despite it serving power, it also has quick mute. It will shut up really quick. It has vivid indicators because that's important. And it has cookies. So many cookies. So this is the UPS that is going to run or going to prevent my server from shutting down without me wanting it to. This is from APC. It's a 2200 uh, volt ampere. I, I don't know why it's uh, written in VA instead of watts, but it's a 2200 VA model. And it's basically the European version. You got a separate version, I guess, for everybody who has a different plug, but we got the European one. And in the back, you can see we got four. Uh, Shuko stecker, one of which will be used for the server. So the idea of an UPS is quite simple. It's basically a glorified battery pack, which stores energy. And then instead of shutting down your PC or shutting down whatever is connected to it in a in case that the power goes out, it will continue to run. But it's not quite as simple in our case because I don't want the server to continue running indefinitely. I want it to shut down. So not only is this supposed to give this some power for some time, but it's also supposed to give it some sort of signal. Does it even have like a port? Did I buy an UPS without a USB or network port? Well, I do know that it can run 120 watts for a solid hour. This being like idle for half the time, I guess this can even run for more than an hour. However, I would really like this to somehow... I think I screwed up here. Okay, well, I screwed this one up. So apparently I bought a UPS that doesn't have anything built in to tell a device to shut down. That was not my smartest move. Well, did I really do that? Well, at least I still got the search protection. Okay, yeah, uh, seems like that. I bought an UPS that doesn't have any function to shut down anything uh, in the case that power goes down. But at, at the very least, we still got like search protection and unstableness protection, which in, in this building also isn't the worst thing. We had a couple of instances where the power was just like plummeting for, a, I don't know, milliseconds. Uh, you can see it on the, on the lights. Uh, so yeah, at least we got that going. So let's connect it and see if it's working. And the test to see if it's working is going to be fairly easy. This does kind of suck. I had everything prepared to like set the UPS up in Freenas and then, you know, the, the protocol and everything to get that going, which, okay. And I guess now it will start up. Yes. Stop yelling, my God. Is it on? I guess so. Uh, before I do anything, let's maybe shut down FreeNAS and the whole server, because I now need to reroute the connection from A to B. Okay, server is out. So this is the cable that powers the server, and I guess if I connect this now to the UPS, the server will have power again. A monitor would have been nice. Can this now boot? Well, it can boot. So at least we know that this thing is passing the power through. That's minimum. 
Something is happening in the server. Oh, finally. Okay, the IPMI is online, or at least partially, because I still can't get into it. Now it should be working. Yeah, when I pulled out the power plug, I also pulled out slightly the network cable for the IPMI. Great job, great job. Okay, so the battery is working. Uh, I am very disappointed that I don't have that auto shutdown function built into that UPS, but I guess I, I did a misslip there on the purchasing side. And it has been like two or three months, so I guess returning it for that cause isn't a possibility. However, I had a look at the different models that um, APC is producing and apparently one of the closest ones would be like that SMT2200 and apparently if I run it at 100 watts which is like the second um, the second column here it would run for more than five hours and I am guessing that sitting in idle not actively working on it uh, that thing here shouldn't consume much more than 100 watts, maybe 150, but uh, that would still give us somewhere in between three and five hours of runtime, which usually resolves the issue of electricity in the building. So I am kind of fine with that. However, we still need to do one test, which is me basically just pulling the plug. Or you couldn't see that, me just pulling the plug and, and seeing if the server continues to work. And if this thing gives like some sort of me, 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 any, any any sort of uh, help me uh, boop, 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 boop. this one this one this one yeah this one is the one connected to the battery okay switching over to battery makes it do very weird sounds oh my god that was uncanny as as fuck it does like a it's, it's, yeah we have a glorified like unstable uh, electricity backup battery okay but yeah, I would have loved to show you how to set up an UPS or me do it myself the first time because apparently that's like a, uh, a service that you need to do uh, right here. You can enable UPS and then you have uh, different ways of listening to anything that is going wrong usually like USB uh, from the UPS to the server or to whatever is uh, has trueness on and then listen to that and you pass it some sort of signal and then it shuts down automatically and I would have loved to do that but uh, yeah I basically bought a battery uh, and I will have to live with that very unfortunate but that's how it is. So for today, I'm going to leave it here. And I guess for the next time, we will do a final, like really final episode for the server because it's basically ready. I will now spend the next few hours setting everything up, setting the real shares up that I need to, to use the server on a daily basis. And once that is done, I can move all of this over there and then finally retire that old piece of crap, the Dell R510 that I bought off eBay and destroyed over the years. And this will finally find its final resting place. But for the next time, I guess we will Go over the final config, things I changed, because I, I'm sure I will change anything, I will change something, I, I'm sure of that. But we will also go over the list of things that we or I learned during all of this, because there are many. I have a list, and the list is long. So uh, buckle up for next time. For today, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed me wandering again and again and again. And I guess see you in the next one. Bye bye.